This is me, the Undead Viking, and this is the game board for Lovelace and Babbage. I don't have a game box to show you. I do apologize because I was playing with a prototype. But ooh, what a fun game it is. Uh, when Artana Games uh, contacted me and said, hey, you want to check this game out? And I've always really enjoyed Artana Games. They have that um, historical bent to them, which I've always really, really liked. Um, I love the fact that it is, they're, they're always really good meaty euros uh, that um, you kind of suck me and my family and in my gaming group for that matter but also there's this like world of reality that um you, you play the game in and so it kind of inspires me to look up the stuff that i'm actually playing if you will uh but this one lovelace and babbage i actually knew uh who lovelace and babbage were before uh just because um i read about them and i, I read about them and actually to begin with i think it was a Neil Stevenson book. I, I might be misremembering that, but I um, just like uh, references to early computers and things like that. And so that's what this is about. It's about computations and it's about a math, which I didn't know <laughs> was going to be. Well, if I had thought about it when I heard the name, I should have been able to figure out that it was going to be a lot of math. But um, I'm not a big math game guy. Uh, I tend to get a little fuzzy when I'm thinking about numbers. But so I was a little bit worried uh, that this game might, you know, just go right over my head and I wouldn't have a lot of fun. Uh, but it was actually a very, very surprising game where um, you had a situations where, yes, there is like math story problem, word problem, things going on where you're just adding this, subtracting that, dividing that, multiplying that, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's not super difficult and uh, it is actually fairly challenging as far as uh, trying to claim different patrons that will give you different influences, and those influences are worth points at the end of the game. So just being really fast at math isn't just the only thing you need to be good at. You need to be kind of um, arithmetically aware. Is that a word? Is that even a thing? Uh, but you have to be arithmetically aware of what you need, not so much of who can be the fastest to get to what. Anyway, it doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now when I'm saying it right here, but let me show you how the game is played, and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. So I'm about to show you how to play a game of Lovelace and Babbage. I'm going to play this as a two-player game, uh, though it does work pretty much exactly the same for three or four players. Um, it's just that when you're going to set out the patron cards, there's going to be a different number of patron cards depending upon the number of players. Uh, the more players, the more patron cards you're going to put out for each round. All right, so the way the game works is that each person is going to get one of these scoring pads, and also this is where you're going to be doing your programming. I'll show you that in just a little bit. Um, also, what you're going to be doing is that each person is going to get a deck of these cards that are going to be your subroutine cards. Now I'm just going to take uh, the you know, Charles Babbage cards here. And these cards then have a special power that allows them to break the rules in such a way if you're able to claim the subroutine card and you get a certain number of these. Um, each person has cards that are going to have different powers on them and they're also going to have different numbers that are on the bottom. Uh, so after everybody you know gets their cards, so let's say my opponent um, is actually then uh, going to play, uh, you know, here we go, Ada Lovelace. And I might as well show you the other two famous people because this is one of those things about Artana games is that they are a very historical uh, based game, which I really like. Here is Luigi Federico Menebria, and here is Mary Somerville. Oh, that guy's probably got the best name. But anyway, so um, the cool thing about this is that with all these uh, people and plus the people that are in the patron deck, they're all real people. And every single time I play a game from Artana, I end up like looking up people's names in Wikipedia and learning something. You know, I, I knew who Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage were before this, but I definitely read about them again. But anyway, so... Uh, before uh, the, the, the first round begins, um, each person starts off with the same number, which is 55. You're going to be sitting on that, and you're going to be using uh, this board, which is going to be your, your like basically your computer, and there's going to be these rows, A, B, C, D, and E, and you see the A and B rows already have uh, the, the, the computer or the, the numbers set up for the addition and subtraction, division, swapping numbers, that sort of thing. And they have the different rows. So you have the racks and you have the rows and that's how you're going to be able to determine. So um, if you, for example, 
if you during your computations uh, you wanted to use um, like add minus five to your total you would say a three minus and that would mean that you were doing a minus five uh, for that particular thing if you wanted to swap the numbers you do a four that would be a swap um, if you wanted to do a division you would be b four and, and division or the division symbol so you know pretty simple but you gotta think on your feet because this is a situation where um you want to claim uh the, the the patrons before anybody else does because that's how you get your points uh but i'll talk about that in just a little bit um so and you'll notice there's all these empty spaces here and that's what these discs are for over here you'll be adding these discs onto the board uh to fill out the rest of the spaces all right, so each person has to pick um, a subroutine uh, card, like to begin with, um, and, and for their special power. So I'm going to pick um, this guy right here because uh, it's 81, and I think I can get to 81 uh, during my turn. Now the rest of these, you can you can have them out, you can be looking at them, whatever you want to, as far as like their abilities and the numbers, which is really important, the number on the bottom, um, you know, so you can kind of put yourself or set yourself up so you'll be able to hit that number. Uh, with the next round. So you have those as well. And then after everybody picks uh, which, which card they want, they're going to take, in this case, since we're playing two players, we're going to take five of these patrons and we're going to turn them over and then everybody see these. Now, I'm going to show you these. So the patrons have a number on the bottom where if you hit that number, you'll be able to claim them as influence. And they have two different symbols for influence. And you'll notice but those same symbols are down here. Each time you are able to claim a patron, you'll claim one of those symbols. And then if you have the most at the end of the game, if you have like the most of these little like leaves, you'll get nine points. Second place gets four points. So you want to be able to obviously be the top one for as many of those as you can. So we have uh, John Stuart Mill, uh, Jean Villapru Power, uh, Emily Warren Roebling, Alfred Lord Tennyson, and George Bull. All right, so we're gonna put those out there. Now everybody gets a chance to kind of look them over and you know to see, okay, what are the numbers that are on those particular cards? And then they're gonna start doing their programming on their their sheet. And so when everybody says go, that's when you grab your pen or pencil or whatever you're gonna use and you start doing and filling out uh, your situation. Now, one of these is really easy. Uh, Jean Villapru has is a 65. We're starting at a 55. Now, normally I wouldn't be explaining this as I go as I was doing my own programming, but I'll explain how this works. So I'm going to want to add 10. So like B1 plus, if I type, if I write in here, B1 plus, I know I'm going to hit 65. With that, excuse my horrible, horrible handwriting. <laughs> All right, so now I'm at 65, and depending upon if, as long as I can be the first person that claims the first player marker, which is the 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 the, the timer there, a 60 second timer, I flip that over and I claim it. That basically gives the remaining player or players in a multiplayer game that many seconds to finish off what they have. All right, so but I'm at 65. I want to get to 81. How am I going to do this? So now for the next thing is, is that, well, I, I'm looking at these things. There's this guy. He's got an 80. So why don't I add 20 to it? And then I can minus 5. Then let me hit 80. So I can go here and I could say B2 plus. So if I did B2 plus, that would add 20. And once again, excuse my horrible handwriting. Uh, never learned penmanship really well. So then I hit 85. Now I got a minus 5. So I'm going to go A3 minus, like so. And that takes me down to 80. But now, remember, my subroutine is 81. So now if I go to A1 plus, like so, A1 plus, that's going to take me to 81. Now, is there any way else I can manage to score at this point? Mm, probably not, because of the fact that, you know, I, I, I can't hit any of these from 81, because uh, there's none of the, the things out there. I can't, I, I can't, oh, and I should mention that you can never go above 99 with your total or below zero. So um, you can't, uh, you know, you have to stay within those, those uh, that structure. 
Um, you know, but I but what I can do now is I can start looking ahead and thinking about the next round. So I have an 81, and let's, let's see if I have I have a 96. Can I get a blank? Probably get another plus 15. But here's something cool. I have this 13 here. What I could do is if I go a4, like so, a4. What that's going to do is that's going to turn that into an 18, and if I do a minus 5 to start my next round, I'll be able to hit that 13 for my subroutine, to, you know, after I claim this one here that has the 81. So that's how you're thinking ahead as far as that goes. So now I've done my, I got my 5, I turn it over like that, and now the next player uh, gets to go. And I'm going to be trying to think of, okay, well, you know, they, they, they go through the thing, they have enough time. Usually, you know, I very rarely do people run out of time with this, but as you get more and more rows uh, put into the board, it does get more and more difficult. But anyway, so we'll just let that run. I'm not going to, like, pretend that, like, the other person's going. So you get done, and then if you're the first player, you do your first one first, and then, in this case, then, you have, like, 65, you'd claim this one, and you get to pick which one you wanted. So... Maybe I want the leaf, uh, or you know, maybe I want the the hour the magnifying glass. I mean, get probably get the other magnifying glass, and then I can maybe you know get a majority of those. So I take them the 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 hour, the magnifying glass in that one. The next player, if since I took that one, they would have to take um, the leaf. That, that that would be their choice. Now, when that happens in a, in a three or four player game, you turn it over to show that both sides have been claimed, and if anybody does hit that. Notice they put the number on the back with 65. If they do do that, they're going to still get a point for getting it, but, you know, they're too late to actually cash in for the for the actual, uh, any of the other ones. But that's how they give you something. So then you'll notice I get to 85 and back down to 80, so I would claim John Stewart Mill, and let's take that other magnifying glass to kind of solidify our majority in that one. And then I'd be able to then claim this when I get to 81, so I'd have that, I'd have that ability. These abilities that you have on here, so like when programming, you may place a sum symbol next to an operation to trigger it twice for the operation result. So you can get, you know, double your rewards for something like that. But you only use that once. Once you use it, it's gone, it's a one-time shot. Uh, but then, like I get down to, I got my... I would claim my, my, my uh, subroutine card, then I get down to an 18, and then I put the 18 up here to show that that's what I'm starting with the next round. All right, so then, um, after everybody else, the other player does their thing as well, what's going to happen is, is that these patrons are going to be gone, you know, and, and they've been used up. We put those aside. Uh, we would, um, once again, uh, do our pre-programming which in this case, like, I'm going to take this one because I can get to 13 pretty easy, the minus 5. So I'm going to, you know, that's the one I'm shooting for this particular round. And I should mention that each time you claim a subroutine, if you successfully do it, those are worth points as well, even if you don't use the powers because they're right there. Uh, then um, what happens is, is that we take a new row of four of these components. Let me make sure I get four. There we go. And we're going to place those in these spots. So plus or minus 31, um, a situation where we can only flip the, you know, where we're flipping uh, uh, times 4 or divided by 4, and a plus or minus 50. And those will be the new uh, abilities. Now, I'm not going to run through another round just because I think you've got the gist of it. You'll, you'll do another round to get to here, another round to get to here. But the big thing is, is that you'll notice that there is these scoring cards here, one, two, and four. If you use the later steps to claim either a subroutine card or, let's just take out our five new patrons here, one, two, three, four, five. If we claim these, if, say, I'm able to get to one of these numbers, uh, like 27, 92, 60, 32, or 98, by using this level C, or later on if it was level D or level E, then I get to cash in uh, more points for each time you do it, you can see over here, where it's like C, D, and E, where it's like you, you'll put a check mark there for each time that you do it. So like for C's, each time it's going to be worth a 
one point, D's are worth two, and E's are worth four. So it's kind of a, a way to inspire you to use the later um, chunks of the, the, the rows C, D, and E uh, later on as the game progresses. Um, after you've played four rounds of the game, you will score these majorities. Uh, the majorities will work, whoever has the most of these will get, the first one will get nine points, the second person will get four. If you have multiple people that tie for the first place, you will add up the nine and the four for 13 total points and divide those up among the first players, uh, and they will, in rounding down. So. If you had three players uh, that, that all scored, like had a majority in something, uh, you know, you divide 13 by three, you'd get four each and you just lose that extra point. Um, if you had three people tie for uh, second place, like one person gets first place and then the other three uh, get second place, uh, then they would each get only one point. You know, it makes sense, you just have to round down as far as the division goes. So then also I should mention that it is quite possible that like when you are frantically figuring out your uh, computations. If you make a mistake, you are allowed one. Ch you are allowed two chances uh, to debug your program. But when you do that, you lose three points. And when you debug your program, what happens is is that from the point that you made your error, you get 60 seconds to go ahead and redo your computations at that time. Uh, but it is worth negative three points at the end of the game. Uh, you get two, you get these points for each subroutine you get. It's two, four, eight, and 16. So if you get a subroutine uh, for every single uh, round of the game, you get the full 16 points. And as I said before, if you're able to use row C, D, and E to claim either subroutines or uh, claim uh, the, the patrons. You, you're going to get bonus points for that as well. Uh, you total up your total points and you over here and whoever has the most points will then win the game. Um, for a mathy game, as I said, I was told there would be no math, uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, I think um, my daughter and I really enjoyed it just because of the fact that like, it made her like do math in her head which I think was really, really educational for her. Uh, I mean, she tends to write out most of her math, which is what she's supposed to do because you know she's in sixth grade, but it was fun watching her actually think and, and do it in her mind. And I, 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 to be fair, I did take it easy on her a little bit and let her kind of work through those programs on her own. And I think, she, and she just had a lot of fun as far as just like, kind of like the story problem aspect of it. Now against um, my gaming group, uh, there's definitely uh, some math guys in my group, and a math girl for that matter, and they really cleaned house on this, but they really, really enjoyed it. And the few times that I was able to geek out a win against those, uh, any of those people, um, I actually felt a great deal of accomplishment because of the fact, obviously, that math is not my super strong suit. Uh, but I had a lot of fun, regardless. Win or lose, it was just kind of fun to have to like challenge myself with having to figure out how to get how to how to get to certain numbers to to claim these particular uh, uh, patrons and working out like the maths as it is uh, to be able to do um, what I wanted to do, which you know is it's kind of like the full fun part of the game. Uh, it, it's a competition against yourself and your your ability to think quickly and figure out computations quickly, and, that, and I really enjoyed that. But anyway, regardless, uh, the game is, has a heck of a lot of fun, uh, regardless of who I play it with. But let me talk about that and more uh, in my final thoughts. Hey, there's there's the game board. Anyway, um, so. <laughs> Uh, you know, again, like I said, I just, I, I love Artana games. They have these real-life figures. You know, Francis Guthrie, Charles Darwin, uh, Louis Pasteur, you know, uh, Johann Gall. So there's, like, real, real people. And, and so, once again, as I said, I would find myself um, Wikipediaing uh, these people and reading up on them, which is, you know, kind of cool. Not only am I playing a game uh, that's, that's fun to play, but I'm also taking a few times for just, like, kind of my own special awareness of history and what's going on and but that's what I expect uh, with our Tana games and I hope they never change uh, so the game itself lots of fun uh, I, I enjoy the expectation of seeing the next row of the computations and how am I gonna work those into how I'm gonna do what I want to do how am I gonna work those lower end um, 
computations into doing what I want them to do? Um, how am I going to make sure I get all these subroutines done? How am I going to make sure I get all these patrons done? How am I going to make sure that I don't like waste my time taking a patron for influence that I don't need? You know, things like that that, that are not that are beyond the actual arithmetic question. They um, just add that extra level, and I, you know, and I think that I mean the game itself would be fun just with the arithmetic part of it, but because there's that kind of euroy victory point, um, you know, uh, butter on the toast, if you will, uh, it makes for a nice tasty snack, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. Plus, it you know, it, it as far as game length, it really doesn't take that long. Um, I mean, there is a little bit of uh, like decision making that each player has to make, but because, but because it is a time situation, you kind of feel frenetic. And as far as trying to get that done, um, you know, I, I did find that to be you know interesting. Now you can take it easy with the whole timing thing, um, like I did with my daughter. You know, I, I definitely like she and I kind of worked our way through it. And um, I, I kind of appreciated the slower pace because I could like make better decisions, you know, as far as like just long-term decisions. Like I'm doing this because next round I would want to do that type of thing. Um, and actually, that helped me all a lot when I played it in the Fast and Furious way, which ultimately I probably had more fun playing just because of the fact that everybody's just oh, scribbling all what they have as fast as they possibly can and. And of course, when somebody screws up their math, that's when everybody has a good yuck yuck at that person's expense, which usually ended up being this guy right here. But anyway, like I said, I was told there would be no math. But um, if you dig, like, well, I mean, first of all, one, if you dig Artana games, you're gonna, this, this feels like an Artana game, which is not a bad thing in any way, shape or form. But if you like games that have kind of those math computation programming things going on, I think you're really gonna like this one. If you like historical games, you're really gonna like this one. And I think just uh, because of the fact that it is, um, uh, a game that lasts kind of like the perfect amount of time that it needs to be around, right? You know, it, it, this game, um, it, it, if, if it lasted too long, I could find myself getting bogged down. But because it's four quick, fast rounds of just cashing in as many points as you possibly can and then comparing them to your opponents, um, yeah, it, it's just a it's just a fantastic little game that you can play under an hour, usually. With, even with four players, after we knew what we were doing, we, we were... We were coming in way underneath that. A lovely some Babbage, definitely uh, worth taking a look at. So, there you go. If you have any questions about it, please ask Will. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Be the best you you can possibly be. Continue to stay awesome. Remove the toxic elements out of your life. And yeah, just, just be happy. Enjoy this crazy, crazy trip that we're on and, and concentrate on that. So until next time, I'm the Undead Viking telling you you're awesome. I hope you're having an awesome day.